Good evening. Welcome to the Farming Podcast brought to you by Private Property. My name is Mbali Wongo and welcome for joining us this um, Tuesday evening. I almost forgot. I was about to say Thursday evening. Clearly, I'm rushing into quarter two already. But welcome for joining us this Tuesday evening. Today's show is a bit interesting because we get to speak to someone who's Uh, build their career within the agricultural sector, but doing something slightly different, not being a farmer, not being a marketer, but we are speaking to an agri-journalist slash photographer who's also had an agribusiness within the agri-value chain. So we're going to get some insights into the different or alternative farming methods that are available to ensure that our beautiful um, sector that we all dearly love, which is the agriculture sector, remains sustainable for the long term. I think it's important to contributing towards food security, but at the same time being sustainable. But um, I'd like to introduce our guest today. Her name is Marinda Lowe and she is, like I said, an agri-journalist slash photographer. Let's get to know about who she is and her role to the agricultural sector. Marinda, how are you doing? Great. Thanks for having me and thank you to all your listeners and viewers. Great to be here. Thank you. Thank you. I'm sure this is going to be interesting conversation, so I really can't wait. But uh, before we get into the nitty gritty, Marinda, please just give us a short introduction, what you've done in the agri industry, um, especially with your compost making business, etc. And what you do now as an agri journalist, etc. Great question. Thank you very much. Um, my composting or my agri career actually started as a as a packaging technologist. Uh, it was a export table grape company, um, exporting grapes to to the EU and to Europe and beyond. And um, they wanted to convert from conventional farming to organic farming. So the farm and it was very sandy soil. So what needed to be done, and um, especially in organic farming, is that you need to build the soil structure and add organic matter. And the best way to do that is composting. Mm-hmm. So I was sent on a composting co- uh, course to Austria, um, and I completed the composting course there, and then I started um, with Italy Reeling Ace. Uh, we started Reliance Compost, uh, which is now a, um, a national composting company providing organic compost to quite a few farms and and landscapers and so on. So that basically was the base also of of organic farming and sustainable farming is the compost. And then um, eventually I actually started writing about composting and organic farming and that led to a career in in journalism. took me to Media 24, to U Magazine and Heisgenoot and then freelancing and event writing um, agricultural articles on anything ranging from quinoa farming to goat farming and alternative farming systems in South Africa. Wow. So, but what does the, what does alternative farming systems mean? Are we talking about changing soil and rather farming in compost or, um, you know, the, the, the new term or kid on the block is hydroponically, et cetera, using growing medium, et cetera. Um, uh, this is regarding into crop production, but maybe moving on to livestock, what are some of the alternative farming methods? Uh, but if you could just explain that concept broadly so we could understand. I think alternative farming is, is looking at historical conventional farming but looking at it from a different angle or farming better or smarter. Um, It can also mean alternative farming systems such as vertical farming. Um, If you live in high density areas and you don't have land surface that you farm vertically, you um, rooftop farming. Um, We see that beehives are being kept on top of skyscrapers. Um, So, People farming in water, um, aquaponics, hydroponics, um, people farming oysters, abalone in seawater, kelp, and then also freshwater farming. So alternative farming is not only looking at conventional farming and doing it differently in terms of organic, but it could also be totally different farming systems, you know. Mm -hmm. What are some of the upsides and downsides 
of having to explore alternative farming systems. Uh, you mentioned, for example, uh, instead of farming like the old traditional ways, people can now farm vertically. It sounds very fancy and technical. Does it come at a high price, et cetera? You spoke about bee bees being kept in skyscrapers. Um, you know, what type of infrastructure and uh, investment is required in that? And who looks after the bees at the top of the skyscrapers? You know what I mean? So what are the, so what are the pros and cons of alternative farming systems? Um, well, the reason for alternative farming is that the old or historical ways of farming uh, is not working anymore. You see that conventional farmings, they need to, to add more chemicals, they need to increase the dosages, but also um, our export markets are, are starting to demand less and less chemical sprays. And um, the standards are very, very high in terms of what, for example, fruit farmers are allowed to use and spray on the apples and pears and citrus that goes to international markets. So from the one hand, there's a demand from customers to reduce chemical and other input, and also it becomes costly. But also, um, uh, we need to look at our resources, our, waters, our, our water and soils being uh, diminished. Um, so from that point of view, we also need to look differently or look for alternative ways of farming. Um, so there's pressure from both sides, both from nature and the resources we have available, and then the markets itself. The demands that we look, the demand that we look differently to to how we farm, um, and then also we need to develop new markets. We we want to start farming different products. Um, we need more bees to pollinate uh, the more uh, almond trees and blueberries that that are being planted in South Africa. So you find that from one industry. Uh, 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 another industry grows and you also find that farmers need to diversify even more in terms of the product range that they have available. Mm. So um, I don't know if that answers your question. Yeah, I mean, you spoke uh, about f from your answer, you've also just alluded to, you know, the reason why alternative farming methods are critical is that they help us preserve our natural resources, you know, um, and that being water and soil, which is such big uh, components into the farming industry. And you've, I think, mentioned that you've just done a bit of work or research around water and soil. Can you share something, something about those two elements for us? I think the two, the two is very inter, interrelated to each other. Um, uh, the example that I mentioned was the same. When you put nutrients, when you give nutrients to the plant and water, um, if there's not a good soil structure, your water will and your nutrients will leach out. So what you need to do, and what certainly what what South Africa needs to do, is build the organic matter content in the soil. What that means basically is adding uh, composting in the soil or on top of the soil, mulching. That not only helps with the evaporation of moisture from the soil, it prevents weeds growing in, in terms of the mulch that you put on top, um, but it also helps to create a soil structure. It, co it creates aggregates, if that's the word I can use, that help to maintain soil in uh, the moisture in the water. So your soil quality and, and soil structure um, goes hand in hand with the type and, and the amount of water that you use. Um, and then, um, yes, but it depends on which soil type you use and also which crop and how you, how you water, how you manage your water and what type of irrigation. So there's many other parameters in terms of water usage that one can look at to reduce the amount of water that one uses. Yeah. Going back to uh, compost, Marinda, because you ran a business uh, within the composting, and I suppose some of the key insights that you're sharing as well um, are you know, real life or lived experiences within your compost business. Um, and you mentioned that, you know, you sold the compost to farmers as well as uh, private individuals in the home gardens. Um, and I'm just thinking, I mean, as, as a farmer who's just farming uh, on, on vast stretches of land, um, you know, that wants to farm more sustainably, I'm sure compost might not work for him or her. Um, you know, unless they try different w methods to preserve soil, etc. But um, do you think for professionals 
who are uh, farming, you know, in their backyard gardens, or sorry, individuals who are growing food systems in their backyard gardens, etc. How, how can they preserve their compost time and time again? Because sometimes as, as a farmer myself, I get queries from individuals saying, oh, my crops died, what happened? And then, you know, they'd send their picture. Um, or someone would say, I just bought a new house. Um, my, you know, I, I can never grow anything in this in this backyard garden. What's wrong with the soil? You know, is the soil too red or yellow or whatever the case is? And people sometimes need advice. So, um, you know, for people then maybe who are not sure about their soil compositions and want to go into compost and maybe just do the two uh, or, or mix the two in their in their uh, private spaces. Um, how can they preserve compost? How can they ensure that you know, they can grow healthy food um, for, the, for, their, for their own individual or family consumption? Sure. It's a, it's a lot of questions in, in one. Um, <laughs> in terms, <laughs> I'll try, try and give you lots of answers as well. Okay. Um, com composting and using compost is just one way of adding organic matter in the soil or adding plant matter back into the soil because you need to feed the microbes and the soil life that's inside the soil. You don't necessarily only have to use compost. You don't have to buy compost if you don't have it. But if you've got leaves or grass or weeds, um, you can you can use that. All all of those are organic matter that you can put back in the soil. Something else in terms of crops dying and using companion planting or making use of a system or method called companion planting um, is also beneficial. Companion, companion planting means that you plant certain plants next to each other. The one is the natural repellent of pests of the other. So it means that they that attract certain um, insects that, will, that are predators of pests and it also means some, some uh, um, plants actually secrete stuff in their roots that actually help um, manage soil health. So companion planting is planting different plants together that are beneficial for the other one's growth or protection. Um, so composting is one aspect of, of farming or soil health, but there's also other aspects such as using mulch. Mulch is a layer of organic matter, whether it's old leaves or grass or cuttings or whatever. So using that on top of the soil to prevent weed growth. That is, for example, that's another way of, of preventing moisture loss and preventing weed growth, using a mulch. Um, and then um, companion planting, uh, as I mentioned, it also attracts insects. That's important to reduce your insecticide um, inputs. Um, what are the other... <laughs> There's so many questions in one, but composting, you don't need, to, and, and composting is not always practical or viable in terms of cost for okay. huge scale, uh, uh, huge farmers, yes, on commercial scale. Ah, thank you. Before I move on to the next question, I just want to uh, encourage any of you watching at home this evening. We are joined by Marinda Lowe, who's an agri-journalist uh, slash photographer um, and uh, I suppose entrepreneur in the composting space, or oh, agripreneur, should I say. And uh, today we're talking about alternative farming methods. And earlier on, if you uh, missed uh, some critical points that you mentioned, is that um, she highlighted a few of uh, examples of what alternative farming methods are. So um, if you missed the first part of the show, you could definitely catch it um, on our YouTube channel. But please comment, um, ask any questions that you have um, to Marinda that you want her to clarify specifically on farming sustainably, on alternative farming methods, conventional farming, or organic compost. Um, yeah, this show is for you. Marinda, I just want to find out... Um, uh, with your, and I'm just thinking with the farmer's hat here, yeah, with the composting business and for people that are listening to you and maybe would want to try being in the composting industry or start their own compost business, um, and you mentioned the word organic uh, in some examples that you explained, is every single compost in the composting business, is it, is it, 100% organic. So when you're going into the business, do you have to be certified organic? Because I know to be organically certified requires some, um, someone to go through uh, what, a certification process of some sort. 
think we need to distinguish between organic farming and sustainable farming. Organic farming is um, it's when, when you go through a certification process to get a label that you can put in your product that gets sold as organic and organic product in a retailer. So the retailer might have some standards and there might be an organic body that might have standards and then your product is certified organic. So it's uh, to farm organically more linked to a, a certification system. Um, to farm sustainably is to look after the resources that you put in, whether it's um, uh, looking at uh, the chemical inputs. It's not necessarily an organic that you're not allowed to use sprays or insecticides or weed killers or so on, but it's the sustainable use of all your inputs. Mm -hmm. um, Something else I just want to mention, we, we're focusing on, on organic farming and, and composting and soil-based, but um, we alternative farming systems could also involve farming in and with water, and that that is aquaculture, which means your plant is, is physically in a, in a liquid medium. It's physically hanging in water, so the, the roots are suspended in, in the water. Um, but um, and aquaponics is um, aquaculture. Actually, sorry, I'm uh, wrong way, other way around. Is that you you farm um, you farm fish or you farm crustacea or prawns or something? So it's a, it's water animals or water plants that's being um, it's being farmed, or often in combination with plants, so that the nutrient rich water of the fish, let's say, use that example, is then fed through to herbs and other plants, um, which then purify the water and use the nutrients, and then the purified water are filtered back to the, the animals, the, the, the fish. So it's a closed-loop system, not always closed-loop, but it's, it's a water-based system. So alternative farming systems could entail farming on land, but it can also entail farming with or in water. Wow. So moving on to something else, I think maybe could also that could also come much closer to home for our audience this evening is that um, also you have like a non-conventional career, right? Um, it's not a traditional um, uh, line that one would pick up based on the, um, the skill set that you have, like photography, and you started writing first, and then you moved into uh, journalism, etc. What, what are some of the non-farming opportunities that exist in the agricultural sector, um, you know, based on your experience and looking at you, how your career has um, also turned? Excellent question. Um, in terms of photography, uh, what, what is interesting when I was researching, uh, 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 writing articles for SouthAfrica.co.za, uh, I wrote about farming and, and agricultural commodities in South Africa, and that was translated into all 11 South African languages. It was a huge project. But the absence of good photos of South African farmers and South African products and South African commodities, that I realize is also a, a huge opportunity, that there's not a lot of images available, you know, of... of um, Trout cages, you know, where trout are being bred and um, things like millet in South Africa, you know. Um, in terms of non-agricultural opportunities in within the agricultural sector, um, sure, there's a lot. I, I'm thinking of venues, you know, if you, wedding venues, um, training venues, um, if you want to train farm workers, um, uh, you know how to prune, how to how to trim the hooves of your goats. You know that kind of training venues. Um, I'm thinking of restaurants, coffee shops, um, uh, farm stores. Uh, something else that's probably non non farming, but definitely related to agricultural commodities is processing. I mean, if you've got a you tomato farmer and your market is satisfied with or saturated with tomatoes and you're sitting with tomatoes, then preserving those products is a secondary, secondary industry, whether you jam it, uh, dry it, pickle it, um, um, you, know, the, you know, further processing of agricultural products. 
Um, uh, certainly, agritourism is is huge, and I think that that's also in terms of people wanting to buy property. I think that could also be an option to look at. Is is how can I use this property also not only to farm but as a destination, uh, probably a tourism destination. It could be people wanting to take part and see what happens on the working farm, but it might also be people wanting to escape the city and just experience fresh farm air. So there's so many aspects of of agriculture um, that that does not that doesn't necessarily involve getting your hands dirty um, 